Welcome to the European Spaceport here on the edge of the Amazon rainforest in French Guiana. And to your VIP pass to a very special event. Because today we're transferring the last ever Ariane 5 to her launch pad. Yes, the mighty Ariane 5 is retiring, hanging up her boots and handing over to her younger sister, Ariane 6. Now, in this program, we are going to celebrate her last ever journey from the building where she's assembled to the pad. And we're also going to be meeting some of the teams who make launches possible here at the spaceport. I'm actually standing on the terrace outside the Jupiter Mission Control Center. You can see some of the spaceport here behind me, these buildings, just a small part of it. Uh, it's actually a very, very big place. And if you take a look over in that direction, about 11 kilometers as the crow flies is the Ariane 5 launch pad, launch pad number three. We'll be heading over there later in the program. I'd speak to my colleague, Raphael Chouvrier, who's been speaking with some of the guests over in that direction. Before we do that, though, I just want to show you inside here, inside the Mission Control Center. This is it. It's uh, got several different functions. Uh, on the right-hand side here, the Jupiter Mission Control Center. We've got the invited guests, the seats for them up there. Uh, in the top, we've got the commentary boxes. And over here on the left-hand side is where the exciting stuff happens, because this is the fishbowl. It's what we call the fishbowl. Um, and it's uh, behind this glass is where the operational teams will be focusing hard tomorrow during the launch. And of course, behind me here, you can see the, uh, the family of rockets, which lift off here, Ariane 5, um, Ariane 6, and of course, the Vegas. Now, the Guiana Space Center is a very big place. It covers about 700 square kilometers. It's actually uh, about three times uh, bigger than the capital city, Cayenne, here. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty big. Uh, there are lots of different facilities, a uh, number of different launch pads. And the whole thing is called the range. That includes the downrange stations, which are the tracking stations along the, uh, the, uh, the flight path. So I'm absolutely delighted to introduce you to uh, Thierry Vallée, who is joining me now. Thierry is the um, head of security here um, at the French Space Agency, because, of course, the French Space Agency is responsible for managing the Guiana Space Centre. Thierry, thank you so much. I know it's a busy day for you, but thanks for coming to talk to us. Um, Thierry, racontez-nous un petit peu le rôle du CNES ici. Thierry, what is the CNES mission here? CNES is the French Space Agency. We are partners with the French government in this beautiful region of Guyana in South America, where those 700 square kilometers are dedicated to the European space activities. The CNES owns those 700 square kilometers and we must permanently ensure the consistency of the use of those 700 square kilometers for space activities coordinating industrial activities of all the stakeholders of the space industry thanks to whom we have the transfer of Ariane 5 and tomorrow hopefully a successful launch, final launch for Ariane 5 and I'm responsible for ensuring the safety of industrial operations here and the flights as well for the safety of the Sinamari and Kourou population and throughout the world because of course the rockets go over all the continents like tomorrow. So it is traveling about. So you've done almost everything that can be done in the space industry. You have a lot of experience. Yes, my professional career in the space industry started 27 years ago. And with almost the same dates as Ariane 5, I'm really the Ariane 5 generation. I landed in 1995 in Guyana. These were the first trials, schedule, fueling of Ariane 5 on the launch 
launch pad number three. And in 1996, I was here for the first launch of Ariane 5. And now I support, or rather, Ariane 5 supports and follows my career. I follow Ariane 5 throughout the launches. And out of 117 launches, I'm almost at 100 launches involved at different positions. I was operations director, the DDO, 11 times. And the DDO is the most important person, the one everybody is listening to uh, inside the fishbowl. Yes, general coordination, really, and gives the go for the launch of the rocket. And yes, the countdown, the last 10 seconds. So, Thierry, what about the future? Do you have several uh, launch pads here at the spaceport? And there are going to be more in the future. Yes, the Guyana Space Center has been existing since the end of the 60s. In 1968, it was the first launch of a French rocket from the center. So the very first launch pad built by the CNES here in Kourou. We have now built nine launch pads, and the latest one is for the future launcher Ariane 6, which will lift off in the coming months from the Guyana Space Center. So we have nine launch pads that were built by the CNES for the European Space Agency for the different space programs for Europe. And we are already preparing the 10th launch pad, which will be the start of a successful future again in Kourou, a very promising one. And we are currently rehabilitating the second launch pad which was built at the center, the diamond launch pad built in the uh, late 60s. It was stopped in 1975, and we are rehabilitating it in order to launch new launchers, micro launchers from Europe in the coming years. So the journey continues. Yes, it continues. It never stopped and won't stop anytime soon. Thank you very much, Thierry Vallée. And good luck for the operations to come. Everything is under control. This is the Mission Control Center. So they, they, as I said, it's this kind of nerve center of operations and really very much oversees the whole uh, of the mission. But closer to the pad, there's another control center. It's called Launch Control. And we're going to go over there now to Adeline Roquier, who is there. And Adeline, launch control in French, it's CDL, le centre de lancement. Qu'est-ce que vous faites, les équipes, là-bas? What do your teams do? in launch control? Good afternoon, Cathy. Good, good morning, rather. This is where we prepare the launcher. At the moment, we are setting the final assembly building as well as the launch pad and the launcher itself so that this transfer can take place. It should take place in a matter of minutes now. And you're in charge of the upper part. You're in charge of the upper part. You're in charge of the upper part. Of Ariane 5. You're actually the upper part combined operations manager. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? What does this mean? I am upper parts combined operations manager, so between the, the different elements and the upper parts of the clients, the satellites, uh, the launcher components. So this includes all of the activities from the moment when the satellites arrive in Guyana. We carry out trials to ensure that they're uh, set properly for the interface elements of the satellite and its adapter. And all of the integrating elements for the satellite on the launcher. So we have mechanical operations as well as electric operations. And how are things looking for the transfer today? Everything is running smoothly. We're well prepared. And as I was saying earlier, the transfer should take place in about 10 minutes. To, up to an hour, potentially. Thank you very much. The teams there in the launch control center uh, and at the assembly building uh, for today's transfer. So uh, we're going to go over there now, closer to the pad, because Raphael Chevrier, who is our technical expert in Ariane Space, has been uh, talking with some of the guests and meeting some of the teams over there. Raphael.
Hello Katie, so I am in front of the final assembly building. This is where the Ariane 5 is assembled. And today our job is very special. It is to transfer the launcher from here to the launch pad. This is very careful operations. The whole assembly, the launcher and the table weight a little, more, a little less than 2,000 tons. Very careful operations. The distance is about three kilometers and it's going to take about 40 minutes or so. So the, the launcher is going to be transferred on the vertical position on a very special movable uh, platform. Uh, it's going to be towed uh, by a small truck, a very special one. And to talk about this, I have lots of very special guests here. And the first one to join me is Jens Lassmann. You can uh, join me here. So you are head of uh, Bremen site uh, for Iron Group, so in Germany. And uh, so Iron Group is the industrial prime of the Ariane 5, uh, the, uh, the Ariane rocket. Uh, so you've worked on Ariane 5 since very early developments in 1998. So you've known uh, all the adventures of Ariane 5, the good ones, the more challenging ones. How does it feel to be here uh, to see this uh, legacy rocket about to make its final journey to the launch pad? Yes, I'm, I'm, first I'm very excited and very happy to be here again in Guyana um, to see this, uh, this launcher which accompanied more or less my whole uh, professional life mm. since, uh, since the, uh, the early start, uh, in, <laughs> it was already in 1995, so before the first launch even of the Ariane 5 rocket that I, that I got in contact with Ariane 5. I think a lot of people mm. have spent the whole career yes. actually Absolutely. with Ariane 5. Iron 5 today that we see here is a bit different than the Iron 5 25 years ago as it has benefited from uh, improvements, right? It changed names, uh, let's say, after Iron 5. You know, we called them E, E, S, G, E, C, A, uh, whatever, M, E. There are a lot of names afterwards, but the, the main improvements are always in performance. We, we try to improve the performance and the cost of the launcher for the market. And uh, we started something around 5.6 tons in geostationary transfer orbit uh, in the early days. And uh, let's say I, I really joined them when mm. we did the big step uh, to practically double the, the performance to 9.3 tons with the cryogenic upper stage mm. ESCA, for which I was uh, the head of uh, program at that time to develop this. Amazing. And it's a very powerful rocket, but also very reliable. Uh, with uh, lots of uh, a very high success rate of 96%. Uh, What's the secret? I think the secret, oh, I believe truly the secret is the people that are behind it. Uh, mm. With all the dedication and passion that, that I see the teams develop it at the time when I was developing it, but now operating it seamlessly and, and in, a, in, a, in a very, very careful and dedicated manner. Mm. I think the secret is the people behind. And this very strong know-how about the rocket is going to benefit from the next generation of heavy launch vehicle, Ariane 6. That, that is for sure, because the, let's say when you see it from the outside, the Ariane 6 doesn't look too much different. It has, a more, it has more boosters, mm. they are a little bit smaller, but it's wide, it's big, it has 5.4 meters diameter. Uh, everything in the DNA of Ariane 6 mm. is already in the DNA of Ariane 5, only a little bit better. <laughs> are you going to see the launch? Yes, I'm, I'm sure this is, <laughs> this is the most exciting part to see the power mm. of, of this big machine roar into space and uh, this is really okay. what I want to do. And any final word you want to say uh, on this rocket before it's okay. actually rejoined the launch pad? Goodbye Ariane 5 and do your job as you did it all the years. Thank you so much uh, for being here Jan Platzmann. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Raphael. And back to you Katie. A very important job here at the spaceport is mission director. And if you've ever wondered what a mission director is, then you're in luck because I have with me the mission director for this launch, Geneviève Dede. Geneviève, vous êtes chef de mission, la première femme de Geneviève Dede, your mission director, you're the first woman to hold this position at Ariane Space. 
Congratulations. What does it mean? What's your job? Being mission director means that we're the preferred contact during the campaign for uh, our in-space clients. The mission director is in charge of ensuring that clients' operations are run smoothly from the moment their satellite arrives here up until it is in orbit. So there's a first preparation phase for satellites. So in, during that phase, it's mostly the clients' teams that are involved. They prepare their satellites, they fuel it. And then there's a phase where the satellite is entrusted to Ariane Space and it is placed on the launcher. This preparation process and the, for satellites and the launcher itself, it's called the launch campaign. It can take weeks, months, teams are here on site, and we have a video, maybe you can describe the images on screen. So here we see the elements of the rocket arriving by ship coming from Europe. They are uh, unloaded and they're brought to the uh, integration building at the Guiana Space Center. So we start assembling the different stages of the rocket. That's what you can see on screen. Once the different stages are assembled, we can see the lower part of the launcher being transferred to the final assembly building. And that is where we are going now. We can see the fairing being set on top of the launcher with the satellites underneath the fairing. Here we see Syracuse. The Syracuse 4B satellites arriving on board the maiden trip of the Canopy ship. Here we see the Antonov that brought the Heinrich Hertz satellite to Felix Ebue Airport. Once both satellites are in Guyana, they were sent to the uh, payload preparation premises. Here we can see the um, Heinrich Hertz satellite, otherwise known as H2SAT, undergoing a set of fit checks. Here our engineers are ensuring that the satellites can properly be set on the adapter of the launcher. Following all of the preparation phases, the satellite is then sent to the tank fueling room. So it is fueled in oxidizer and hydrazine. Once fueled, the satellite is set on the flight adapter, sent to a transport container, and then transported to the final assembly building. Here we can see the fairing being prepared and the satellites being set under the fairing. Here they're decorating the fairing putting the logos, and then the fairing is set on the launcher. Now our launcher is ready. It's incredible looking at these images. It's very moving. All this technology, all the brains of people, the experts are working behind the scenes. Your job is fascinating, absolutely. There are a few of us throughout the world working in the space industry, and we're extremely proud to work for the European space industry. Well, I wish you the best for the future of your operations, Geneviève. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I wish you a successful launch. A common reason for a launch to be delayed is, of course, the weather. The operational teams here at the spaceport can control pretty much anything. But when it comes to the weather, well, that's down to Mother Nature. But there are, of of course, lots of uh, elements and conditions that we can and do monitor, and a launch can only happen if all the conditions are correct. So joining me now is Anne-Sophie Chassagneau. Anne-Sophie, you are a meteorological engineer.
So she is an expert. We're very lucky to have you with us to explain the weather. On sait que c'est important le temps. We know that uh, weather is important, but why is that so? Well, at the um, Space Center and for launches in general, the weather plays a specific part. There are several criteria that we have to check on a daily basis and for launches in particular. So every day for all of the operations on base, there can be meteorological risks linked to uh, wind, rain or lightning, for instance. For all operations, we are asked to give our go or no go. If there's a go, well, the the meteorological team continues to follow the weather conditions to protect both the people and the infrastructure at the CSG. As for launches, it's towards the end of the schedule that the whole uh, meteorological team needs to give its go or not based on several criteria, so linked to wind or lightning. We have three uh, criteria for lightning, C1, C2, C3. They're based on an American Rex uh, following, most importantly, the Atlas Centaur accident in 1987 and they were adapted to Guyana. So we want to make sure that our launcher doesn't get struck uh, either on the ground or as it is flying. As for wind, there are several criteria as well. One is to ensure that the launcher is, is steerable and the other two are wind at altitude and wind at coast to avoid debris uh, falling or toxic gas falling on, on the Guiana population in case the launcher is destroyed. And you're the one giving the go or no go, right? Yes, absolutely. During launches, there are two of us, so in this specific case, Fanny and myself, and it's based on the data uh, that my colleagues Clemence and Marie-Hélène retrieve that we can give our go or no go at the end of the schedule. So here in Guyana, it happens to be a very, very favorable place uh, to launch rockets. Yes, the site here was chosen for these meteorological advantages. We're too close to the equator to have hurricanes here, so that's one risk that we avoid compared to other places on the planet. Thank you so much, Anne-Sophie. Back to you, Raphael. My pleasure. So I have been joined by uh, Jordan Mercier, Ariane Main Stage Technical Authority at Ariane Group for Ariane 5. Alors, aujourd'hui, nous allons transférer tout le lanceur Ariane 5. Today we'll be transferring the entire Ariane 5 and the table from the final assembly building to the launch pad, but the assembly of the main stage started before and far from Guyana. Yes, absolutely. It, its integration started in 2021 and it was during 21 and 22. The integration of a main cryogenic stage takes nine months at the Mureaux, so to the west of Paris. So we integrate uh, the um, front skirt coming from Germany and the rear skirt coming from the Netherlands with all of the uh, electric and fluid equipment. Then we assemble them to the tank. With and then we carry out a fluid electric functional trials to ensure that everything is running smoothly and then we send it to Guyana in a container. This main stage was united with this or at the Space Center only last year. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. We've only had it for a few months, but we unloaded it from its container in May and we hoisted it on both stages and then we added the upper stage. The transfer will happen in less than an hour. What steps are being followed at the assembly? Building. Today, both stages are closed, all doors are closed, ventilation is, is running, everything is safe, both for satellites and uh, stages, so that the taxiing can take place up until the launch pad. Good, and the final schedule will start tomorrow. The teams will wake up early, around 7 a.m. Many oui, operations will be done. Aussi, Can you elaborate? For me, for the main cryogenic stage, I will start at H-9 with the pressurizing uh, of the Vulcan uh, engine uh, activation group. Then I will check the, the cooling and the fueling of both uh, tankers of the main stage. So this will be four hours before um, H-0 and then up until H-0. I will make sure that the main stage is ready for flight. Fantastic. Just a final comment. 
before this last transfer and launch. I am extremely proud. It's a beautiful stage, and I'd like to thank all of my colleagues, operational colleagues from B60, who've done an excellent job on this stage. Yes, many people work on each launch at the Guyana Space Center and elsewhere in Europe as well. Thank you very much, Jordan Mercier. Safety is, of course, top priority here at the Guiana Space Center. Whether you're driving around the base, whether you're working in an office, whether you're filling the tanks on a satellite or the rocket, we all need to be kept safe. Now, the Paris Fire Brigade actually has an attachment here at the Guiana Space Center. And uh, Damien Charlier joins me now from the brigade. Damien, uh, the the Paris Fire Brigade is here in Guyana at the CSG. Why is that so? Well, the Paris Fire Brigade has been present in Guyana since 1969 to ensure the safety of people, goods, and the environment in the Guyana Space Center. In complement, they can also provide support upon demand to the local emergency services of Guyana. Finally, our last mission is to ensure the safety of planned industrial operations in the Guyana Space Center based on the schedule such as today, this transfer operation. Can you describe a typical day of work here? A typical day for a fireman from Paris here in the Guyana Center starts with a meeting during which the firemen are being dispatched on the trucks in order to perform emergency interventions. Then we have uh, workout trainings, operational preparation meetings, and everything around the fire brigade up until we get called on a mission, we hear the drill, and go for an intervention. And if it's a planned intervention, then we go on to one of the industrial sites to ensure safety there. There are many animals here in Guyana. We're near the equator. You also take care of them, right? Yes, we have a lot of animals in the Guyana Space Center, which is a protected area, and we're in charge of the safety of men, of course, but also of animals. And in this regard, we have many interventions. At the moment, we have large families of capybaras around the Space Center and all around for the Ariane launch pad. We also have uh, many sloths climbing where they shouldn't, so we get them and set them free further away, and sometimes even larger animals, such as jaguars, who require vet care by the firemen. Keeping the animals safe, that's uh, very, very It's very important, important to keep animals um, safe. Something very sad happened recently. You lost a colleague, Briscaron. His name is on the fairing. Yes, Corporal Caron, during a mission, went all the way for an intervention, an emergency intervention. They left, took a truck to go on the intervention and had an accident on the way to the mission and he passed away during that mission. I'm very, very sorry to hear that. His family, his loved ones, his children, his wife are in our thoughts. Thank you very much for being with us. Now back to you, Raphael, over at the assembly Raphael, building. Raphael, je vous la so I've been joined by Alice Tamusier and uh, Simon Lapostol. Je suis avec Alice Tamusier et Simon Lapostol from ADF, your methods director, Alice. Simon, your contract manager. So, welcome. Could you explain what is the role of ADF? What is ADF, and what's their role in the Ariane 5 transfer activities? Hello. So ADF started its journey in 2020. We have 70 men and women working on maintenance, logistics. 90% of our activities are around in the space industry through maintenance contracts, an operations contract, 
on Ariane 5 Vega. It's also maintenance engineering during the start phase of Ariane 6. On this transfer, we work on preparing and moving the table. We hook the tractor and bring the table to the launch pad to position it on the launch pad. So these are some very delicate operations, a slow process. Is there any specific part of the operation that you focus on? Yes, first of all, it's the taxiing path. It's a railroad. It must support the 2,000 tons of the table and the launcher, so we must keep it nominal throughout the year. Then it's the traction phase at 3.5 kilometers per hour up to the launch pad, and then we we approach and anchor the table. Okay, and it's a special truck. Yes, it's an 8.9 truck. The traction capacity is very high. We start in a hydrostatic mode with the hydraulic power to get the table out of the building, and then we must ensure a 3.5 kilometers per hour speed, as I said earlier. You never get tired of watching those transfer operations. They're unique. How many transfers have you seen, Alice? Yes, it's always a unique moment. Personally, it's the it's my 11th transfer from the final assembly building to the launch pad for Ariane 5, but it's always fascinating from a professional point of view. It's, it's very exciting to work on, on such an exceptional end product. And personally speaking, I feel so lucky to be here and to, to take part in such an event. Yes, of course. So how do you feel about watching this last transfer of an Ariane 5? Obviously, it's a very exceptional and unique moment, but it's also the finalization of our commitment on this campaign, so it requires rigor and professionalism, of course, to complete the operations, of course. And this is the last Ariane 5 transfer before Ariane 6 arrives. And I know ADF is very much involved with Ariane 6. Indeed, the ADF group is a company that offers an end-to-end -end service. This means that our teams intervene all throughout the life cycle of the productions from its design to its maintenance uh, up until the environmental restoration. And it's the case with Ariane 6 in particular because uh, with our T6 brand, we I conceived a, a uh, propor uh, propulsion horizontal integration cell for Ariane 6 boosters. We also have horizontal assembly line lines, and we also have ground space interfaces with uh, the cryogenic arms that are going to uh, fuel the launcher with hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And behind of the, all of this, and for about 10 years, we're going to be in charge of maintenance and operations. Your perspective is very interesting, so thank you very much, Alice and Simon, for being with us. Joining me is squadron leader Elwa Pierchon, who is the deputy prevention officer at the French Guiana Constabulary. Merci beaucoup d'être avec nous. Thank you very much for being with us. What do gendarmes do here at the CSG? So what do the gendarmes do at the CSG? I think we should remind people that the gendarmes are constantly present as the CSG, as part of a covenant with the CSG, and they ensure the safety of the space center continues. Of course, during a launch, this safety operations increase and the number of gendarmes involved in those safety operations can go up to 150 gendarmes during a launch such as the one planned very soon. They ensure the safety from the arrival of the elements of the rocket through or by sea, around the ports, be it the Degardekan port or the Kourou port, up until the launch pad. And there are operations from the gendarmerie to control road access, operations around intelligence as well in order to anticipate potential threats. 
and upstream safety operations, but also during the launch with different factors, different units of the Guyana Gendarmerie units, mobile gendarme, local gendarme, and also specialized units from the Guyana Gendarmerie commandment, such as the GIGN unit, the air unit, and other specialized units. It's a very comprehensive work, then. It's fascinating to work in the space industry to have this opportunity, this possibility. Yes, I do believe that the gendarmes involved in this mission are very proud of this. They're aware that they're part of historical and unique moments, and they can also be in the front row to watch it and enjoy it, but they, of course, mainly focus on their mission, and this is done, of course, in coordination with different structures, be it safety units, armed forces, and all the stakeholders of safety and the CNES, of course. So, yes, I know that the gendarmes are particularly happy to be part of this mission. With Thank you very much. such high security here at the spaceport, the job of protecting it also falls to the army. And the French army is actually stationed here in French Guiana. Joining me is Colonel Jean Pierre Royer. Uh, from the French army. Uh, Colonel, quel est le rôle de Colonel, what's the part that the army plays here? The army takes part of the external protection plan. It's called the Titan operation, an inter-army operation. The objective is to protect the Guiana Space Center during transfers or launches. And what do you do during launches? So during the launches, the Guyana Armed Forces are deployed on land, at sea, and in the air. So it's a very large inter-army system with up to 300 militaries protecting the Guiana Center. And our third infantry regiment is mainly in charge of land operations. That's impressive. And you're celebrating your your 50th anniversary here. Yes, the third foreign infantry reg regiment was created in 1975. The most decorated regiment, a very prestigious one, left Madagascar in 1973 and came to Guyana in 1973 and has been working with this space center since 1979. 50 years of launches, then, you, you must have unforgettable memories. Yes, the regiment went through some unforgettable moments. There was a very big highlight in 1979, right before the launch of Ariane 1. The regiment was very much involved in the organization of the Guyana Space Center, which allowed the launch of Ariane 5 to be done on time. And in that occasion, the regiment received the Verme Medal from the CNES in 1979. It was at Christmas time, right? Yes, on December the 24th, indeed. Thank you so much, Carlo. Right, Thank let's you. head back now to the assembly buildings and to you, Raphael. So I've been joined by François Bomblé, uh, responsible for ground operations uh, of RN5 at MT Aerospace. Bonjour, François. Bonjour à tous. MT Aerospace joue un rôle crucial dans ces opérations. Hello. They have a crucial role in the transfer of moments where within an hour to the transfer from the final assembly building to the launch pad. The point is to disconnect it from on-ground installations. What are activities are operated? So the last operations to configure the table and the building are ongoing. In addition, we have a configuration control, which will allow the start of the P2 phase and the evacuation of non-essential staff for lifting. OK, and the launcher and its table will be transferred from the building to the launch pad with what we call a transfer group. Could you explain what it is? Yes, the transfer group, or GST as we call it, is what will allow the launcher to be autonomous in terms of energy and air conditioning. The launcher must be 
with air conditioning and energy during taxiing. And there's also a back wagon which connects it to the optical fiber to ensure the connection to the launch pad. So the team around the launcher and the truck is a very reduced one because there are solid boosters. So how many people work on this final transfer? During the first taxiing phase, which is to get out of the building, the lifting team is complete, so about nine people stay around to make sure there's no interface. Then we evacuate almost everybody, and there's only two drivers left and three staff from our company making sure that everything goes well during taxi. Yes, and we actually are going to evacuate in a minute for the transfer to start, because there are, of course, uh, safety concerns. Yes, taken very seriously. Thank you very much, François Bomblé. You can join your team. Let's turn our attention now to the fairing, which is the top of the rocket, and it's where the satellites sit. Um, a company who knows an awful lot about fairings is Beyond Gravity, and joining me now is Dario Kubli. Dario, thanks very much for joining us, because, of course, this part of our rocket, the fairing, is a really important part. It's like the house, isn't it? It's got the satellites inside. It is, it is the house of the satellites. Yeah. Well, I mean, for anybody who's kind of unfamiliar with a launch, can you explain the job of the fairing? Yes, there are two roles, one on during ground operations. Um, it protects the satellites from exterior effects. And also, with help from the ventilation lines, uh, we can create a controlled environment regarding temperature, hydrometry, and cleanliness. Because it does get very hot here. Let's just throw yes. that one in. Exactly. And during launch, there are the same rules like I mentioned before. But then there are also some friction during passing the atmosphere. And there is also some heat. So, uh, and a lot of noise. Yeah. A lot of noise. Very, very noisy at liftoff. And of course, it protects from the acoustic vibrations, doesn't it? So, uh, why do we need different fairings for different launches because of course we do have different size satellites yes indeed uh, there are normally in FNAF and R5 program there's a fairing which 17 meters high and for the future the way this it is asking for even larger or bigger fairings and that's we are we are preparing to and what kind of technologies are you developing because I mean obviously you're evolving all the time yes in the past um, the fairing was produced out of 14 panels and then they were assembled uh, in our facility in Emmen, in Switzerland. And now we have already for Iron 5 optimized the process. There's now we can produce one whole fairing in one shot with a big industrial oven. And this helps a lot to, to optimize uh, the process and er everything else. Gosh, it must be a really massive oven to contain that fairing. Yes, it's a really big oven, yeah. Because you, it's, well, it's also already prepared for RN6 with even three to four meters more on the, regarding the height of the fairing. Oh, well, listen, good luck. Good luck with everything. It sounds like you've got a lot of work there and you're all working very hard. Thank you very much yes, indeed. Thank you for having me. So there you have it, the fairing at the top of the launch vehicle, keeping our satellites nice and safe. Raphael. So I have been joined by Lionel Charles, Fluids Technician, and uh, Pierre Monot, Technical Manager at CGLEC Space. Merci à vous deux d'être ici. Thank you for being here. Could you explain the role of Sigilic Space as part of an Ariane 5 launch campaign? Sigilic Space is a historical partner at the Space Center for more than 10 years. We mainly work on mechanics and fluid systems, be it interface with the launcher, fueling, satellite conditions. You can see her behind us with the cryogenic technical arms, activity, cross-functional activities, methods, maintenance, procurement, document management, etc. And what are the activities spe specific to the Ariane 5 transfer from the final assembly building to the launch pad? So there's a first phase to control autonomy of the launcher. So we check all the parameters before the transfer. It's basically on life support. And then we have satellite ventilation, which remains active. And second stage, which is physical disconnection from the fluid networks. This is all done with the transfer management, who is somehow 
vraiment euh, sans fausse note. Controlling and managing this, and we must follow him up until uh, the end of the physical disconnection and the transfer to the launch pad. And then you need to reconnect it on the launch pad, yes. And then tomorrow morning you will start the final schedule activities. Yes, we start again, and we need to configure the Creo line, the conventional line and everything else. Yes, up until the launch. How many launch campaigns have you been involved in? I'm pretty new, 25 actually, not too bad, and 48 for myself. Since 2013, 2013. Okay. And how does it feel? What, what, is, what is this mythical launcher for you since you've worked on it for many years? To me, it's a lot because I'm from here. I've had my experience in mainland France, and then I got to come back here to work in the work in the largest Guinea, Guyana industry. As a child, I used to watch the rocket lift off, and it's amazing for me to work here now. The same in terms of reliability. I think the f it's a very large, it's very solid, it works really well, and we hope it will continue like this till the end, till tomorrow. Yes, final launch and before the arrival of Ariane 6. Thank you very much, Pierre Monot and Lionel Chat. Thank you very much for your interesting perspective. In 1999, the first operational Ariane 5 lifted off from the pad with on board a space telescope called XMM Newton, which is still delivering valuable information about our universe today. Since then, she has delivered a succession of remarkable spacecraft, and the people who create them are quite literally changing our lives here on Earth. Let's take a look back now at some of the highlights and some of the most memorable missions of Ariane 5. So there you have it. Those are just some of the people uh, working here at the spaceport whose expertise means we can send all kinds of satellites to all kinds of orbits. Uh, Raphael and I are going to uh, leave you now because we'll be back tomorrow for the launch. But our cameras are going to keep filming and we're going to be able to show you the rollout live. And I highly recommend that you stay tuned and watch it because it is a remarkable sight watching the the magnificent Ariane 5 moving slowly through the Amazon rainforest. It's the last time you'll see it, so it's a historic moment. We're back tomorrow for the launch. Our live show starts at 10 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. That's 11 o'clock Central European time in the evening at night and 6 o'clock in the evening here in Kourou. So until then, bye-bye.
Six, cinq, quatre, trois, deux, unité, stop.
six, cinq, quatre, trois, deux, unité, stop.